Before I get started with today's video, I really want to thank everybody who has been watching my channel, commenting on the channel, uh, who have subscribed to the channel. Um, I've really, you guys have helped me reach an important milestone in my eyes, which is more than uh, 500 subscribers. I passed the 500 subscriber mark a couple days ago. Uh, my next milestone is to a thousand and then beyond. So again, truly uh, thank you guys for tuning in listening and appreciating all the efforts that I'm putting into bringing all this content together. Now in today's video, I'm not trying to burst anybody's bubble, uh, but what I have to say today um, might upset a few people, I don't know. Um, hopefully everybody has thick skin uh, to get through this, but I'm gonna be talking about some important things. Um, but what I do have to say is this, and uh, it, because I, I believe that things need to be put into a little bit of perspective before the swell conference there were way too many people that were hyping up swell uh, as though it was some uh, major announcement that was going to happen about xrp that was going to set xrp on fire and that's really not how it works you know and there was so much hype that was going on on youtube blog headlines that were pumping up some form of a false expectation that this one event was going to be the one the one event that again was going to set xrp to the moon and after all the hype that went on uh and this the the big uh, price boom speculation there was just a little bit of a bump and then a pricing pullback and then after the price pulled back there was an entirely new series of videos of people crying about why XRP is dropping after Swell. Maybe it wasn't the right announcement. Maybe it just wasn't important. Maybe whatever, whatever, whatever. There was all this speculation going on again, but just a lot of uh, whining in my, in my eyes about why XRP didn't boom and why XRP was pulling back and why you know it didn't have the impact on XRP that everybody was speculating about beforehand and all i really have to say is stop hyping up these events as the end all be all that's going to shoot and ripple to the moon then whine about it and about the fact that nothing that nothing happened after the event is over it gets a little bit tiring and old and it's really a it, it's a troubling trend on youtube in general which is speculation price hype then more speculation when what they thought was going to happen didn't happen. And in this case, what we saw after Swell was a small pump as traders were buying on speculation and FOMO, pumping up the price. And then after it hit a certain number after the Swell conference was over, those same tra uh, traders were selling. And that brought the price pullback. And that's really, I think, all there was to the little bit of a bump and the little bit of a pullback. Um, that's not what I'm uh, going to talk about today, but, you know, bear with me through this. So this is uh, Jeff with the HODL Report. Join me on today's video as we explore the hype behind the Cybos conference. I don't know if I'm pronouncing Cybos right. If you like today's video, please give a thumbs up. Leave some comments below. I would like to get some more good discourse going. We've had good discourse on uh, previous videos. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel, forward it on to uh, your friends that uh, you think could be interested uh, in this channel as well. And all I've got to say is don't believe the hype. I'm going to put that uh, theme song on. I <laughs> put the song on, but didn't want to get tagged by some sort of uh, infringement of, uh, of rights or whatever. So... Um, in a few short weeks, uh, the Cybos conference is taking place. Yes, Ripple is a participant, and they 100% should be. Uh, they're slowly but surely uh, becoming a major player in the cross-border and remittance space and a direct competitor to SWIFT. But just because Ripple is, at the, is an exhibitor at the Cybos conference, doesn't mean that there's going to be some major announcement that's going to push the value of XRP to the moon. Uh, and just because they're at the conference, don't read in uh, between all these lines as to why oh, they're at the Cybos conference. It's critical that they're there. And in a minute, we're going to see why it's so critical uh, that Ripple is there and why it's actually unique as being really uh, the one of the only uh, true uh, blockchain uh, companies that's, uh, that's represented. Um, now, again, you know, stop focusing on the event as if there's 
some hidden purpose uh, of Ripple's attendance at the conference. They're at this conference because it's important to, for them to be at the industry standard conference. Now, if you've ever been in the business world, you'll know there are conferences. Every industry has them. My industry uh, has at least a small local or regional conference somewhere in the world every single week. Then we have national conferences. Then we have international conferences. In truth, I could spend pretty much every day traveling to a conference somewhere in the world. Uh, some of these conferences have tens of exhibitors with a couple hundred attendees, maybe 50, 60 attendees. 70 attendees some have hundreds of exhibitors and you get a few thousand uh, attendees and I have participated in conferences every single year where there's thousands of exhibitors and you get over a hundred thousand attendees now these conferences have fantastic workshops there's a lot to hear there's a lot to learn it's industry specific information and there's industry leaders that you can rub shoulders with that you can meet that you can network with companies are there to present new technologies they're there uh, for these meetings they're there for networking there's lots of parties and of course there's also lots of drinking that goes on every single night at every one of these conferences i don't care what part of the world you're in um, now, this doesn't mean, again, that there's uh, going to be some huge spike in business immediately after the conference due to the conference. That's simply kind of a childish notion um, that all this magic happens at the conference. And again, a lot of great things happen at the conference. That's why people spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to attend these major conferences. Um, but it's it's kind of ridiculous to make these assumptions that just because you're at the conference that you come out of the conference and all of a sudden boom you know it's some magic or a panacea to uh to instant uh stardom of of your business and let you see your business boom you know the moment you leave the conference it just doesn't work that way now everyone really needs to take a step back and put this market into perspective Again, XRP is going to take off when XRP is good and ready to take off. And we've all discussed this. I know I've discussed it. Others have discussed it. Um, there are a number of important things that need to happen before XRP is going to see that skyrocketing boom uh, to the next level. More customers have to join RippleNet and they need to start using the Ripple solutions. You need utility, right? You need more customers using the x rapid solution and yes we have to mention that dirty word there has to be some decision on regulation uh, of the industry we have to get some answer as to whether or not uh, the uh, sec sees the xrp as a security which it isn't but we need that final decision and i let the uh, the world of financial institutions put everybody's uh, mind at ease but i don't even know if the regulation is truly holding everybody back because we're seeing progress being made despite the fact that the SEC is floundering uh, on that subject. Now, how do we get a big increase in utility? Through adding new customers, moving customers to using XRapid. How do you get new customers? Through meetings, sales, negotiations, and contract signing. Now, this is a process that can take weeks, months, and due to legal requirements, it can take years uh, for the completion of some of these contracts. Now, yes, 100%, again, it's important that Ripple attends the Cybos conference. Why? Because it's the largest conference for the financial services industry. Now, per the Cybos website, Cybos is the world's premier financial services event. Cybos is the global financial services networking event organized by SWIFT. The annual conference and exhibition connects more than 8,000 executives, decision makers, and thought leaders from across the industry. It's, it's definitely 100% a critical conference to be there. And if you're at that conference, you're a player. If you're a player and you're not at the conference, you're no longer a player. That's how some of these conferences work. You're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. You have to be at these conferences. Uh, is this important? Yes. This is where business can happen but guess what there'll be a huge assortment of attendees and decision makers at this event now can big can ripple 
uh, release big news uh, during the conference. Of course, it can do that, but they're not even a headliner at this conference. From the schedule, it doesn't look like Ripple is a speaker at any of the at any of the uh, breakout uh, workshop sessions. But Swift is throughout the entire uh, itinerary every single day uh, they're presenting their technology their newest technology um, i'm sure that ripple is going to be discussed in some of the sessions but from reviewing it i didn't see that so that uh, i mean ripple i didn't see that ripple was represented at any of these workshops now the ripple team has a tremendous opportunity to network and will meet thousands of important decision makers and have unbelievable conversations and collect tons of business cards, then the sales process really begins at that point. Now, during many of these conferences, business can be signed. I know we've signed business at the conferences, but that business has been set up and staged prior to, and that again could be weeks, months, if not you know a couple years of negotiations, of discussions, leading up to a meeting at the conference now this is a tremendous opportunity for uh all of these uh business uh, executives and leaders to co-mingle to mingle to meet to discuss and ripple is going to have this opportunity to see many of their existing current customers in one locations uh, one location without having to travel all over the world to meet them individually um so this is definitely a huge benefit but again, uh, any business that could be signed or even these meetings are weeks and months and months and months of planning uh, to get to the point where they have this opportunity to sit down and meet. And this is also fantastic because you have customers that have just gone live with X Rapid, customers that are on RippleNet, new customers, customers that are thinking about joining Ripple, and they're all mingling at the booth at the same time. So you have a lot of face-to-face -face interaction and discussion. So it's a very important period of time now what's interesting about this conference cybos is organized by swift many of the attendees are swift members and customers swift has controlled the agenda of this conference for years they've orchestrated this conference to bring everyone together to keep pumping their agenda and it's really a genius move for them to do that they essentially control the narrative of the conference but at this point, the conference has really grown beyond the confines of SWIFT because we see, we see industry players and leaders that are competing with SWIFT. Ripple, for instance, a competitor to SWIFT at this conference because it's moved beyond just all about SWIFT to being the, uh, the global uh, conference for the financial services industry. Now, what's important about Cybos is that companies around the world are taking advantage of this amazing networking opportunity to get together. Now let's take a look at, I wanna dig into the website a little bit. I just wanna bring you through that. Let's see, go through the who's who of those who are attending. Um, and before we do that, I just wanna quickly go through um, the, uh, the about Cybos, a little brief history of, uh, of Cybos. Okay, so, um, Cybos. Let's just go through this real quick. Obviously, you guys can go and visit at Cybos.com. Cybos is the world's premier financial services event. Cybos is the annual conference, exhibition, and networking event organized by SWIFT for the financial industry. Uh, what started out as a banking operations seminar in 1978 has grown into the premier business forum for the global financial community to debate and collaborate in the areas of payments, securities, cash management, and trade. Now, why do they say attend? And this is so important, right? So for one week every year, Cybos brings together some 8,000 business leaders, decision makers, and topic experts from a range of financial institutions, market infrastructures, uh, multinational corporations, and technology partners. With hundreds of speakers and conference sessions, nearly 200 exhibitors, actually there's 214 uh, by my count, and multiple networking events, Cybos is the place to discuss business strategy, build networks, and collectively shape the future of the financial industry. Uh, who we are. Cybos is organized and facilitated by SWIFT, the global provider of secure financial messaging services as the financial industry's cooperative. SWIFT's role is twofold. So here they are already pumping themselves uh, on Cybos and, and you know, it's, it's free publicity and marketing for them. 
uh, so they can mingle. SWIFT enables more than 10,000 financial institutions and corporations in 212 countries and territories to connect and exchange financial information securely and reliably. Uh, reliably. Here they are, again, pumping themselves. Uh, SWIFT also brings the financial community together to work collaboratively to shape market practice, define standards and debate issues of mutual is interest. Cybos is SWIFT's flagship event. I think this is really critical for a company to do that, knowing that you're going to bring competitors into your space, yet they do it anyways. Uh, and it, it, it's kind of, it's, to me, it's meaningful. Uh, you know, we know all about, you know, the inefficiencies and the, the antiquated nature of SWIFT. But at the, at the core you know, concept of organizing a, an event like this uh, to bring together financial leaders, obviously they're pumping themselves up, say, hey, you know, but we have 10,000 of our, our, our customers attending. Uh, but still, it's a, it's a really, really important uh, conference uh, to attend overall. So let's get into the uh, exhibitor list for 2018, and we'll go through this. And again, it's... it's reads as a, a who's who uh, in this financial space. Um, as we go through, you'll see a lot of uh, known banks um, and names uh, throughout. You have a lot of in international players um, and, and uh, financial institutions as we scroll through here. And you have a lot of these uh, service providers. You'll see Microsoft in here and Google's in here, um, Bank of America, Bank of China, uh, Barclays, um, ING is uh, in there. Uh, we haven't got to them yet, but um, let's quickly. Uh, there's BNY Mellon. Um, I believe PNC. Let me see. We'll go through this. Um, all right. Let's see. City. Um, we've got. I mean, just tons and tons uh, of of banks. So we got the Deutsche Bank. So anyhow, you guys get the idea. We can we can scroll through this. I kind of want to speed this up. IBM. And this was actually what was interesting. I wanted to get to this point. IBM is in attendance. XLM Stellar is not in attendance. Um, however, R3 uh, is in attendance uh, at this conference. So let's uh, scroll down. And there's Microsoft. Um, where is it? Let's see. Okay, there we go. Here's R3. Um, and then we've got Ripple. So all in all, there's uh, 214 exhibitors uh, at this conference. You got the Federal Reserve. This is, again, it's, it's so important from a networking perspective and a reach out. Imagine you can go and you've got a list of, of uh, financial institutions and banks and you say, okay, these are guys that we know are about to sign up with RippleNet. Here's our opportunity. They're all at the show. They're all in this space at this moment. This is the time for face-to-face -face meetings with all of them at one time, and you get the, the fire and the excitement uh, while they're at the meeting. So, okay, so we, we went through, again, 214 exhibitors on, on that list. Um, you know, I've gone through really the, the importance of, uh, of attending. Uh, the fact that Ripple, um, ha and this is kind of going back to Swell, a little bit of hype, but uh, the fact that Ripple rolled out X Rapid at Swell, and they're, go they're really going into the Cybus conference locked and loaded, ready to show the world that they're a serious competitor to Swift, offering technology that Swift simply doesn't have, and now is the time. A, a good number of the Ripple customers are going to be there, as we just, uh, as we just showed, um, and there's going to be others that, again, are on their opportunity list uh, that they are imminently going to be joining RippleNet. Um, and also being able to roll out X Rapid in front of all of these banks, because again, Swell wasn't about that. This is all about the financial services industry. Now's the time to show off X Rapid. This is an opportunity for, for the Ripple customers, again, to mingle with each other uh, at the Ripple exhibition booth. This is where the magic will truly begin to happen because as you have banks that have yet to sign with Ripple, uh, with RippleNet, we'll have the opportunity to speak in person with those who already are part of RippleNet and some who have gone live with X Rapid. Uh, decisions will definitely be made at the conference. Uh, amazing networking is going to take place at the Cybos conference. But again, we have to stay real and we can't expect that there's going to be some big price bump uh, because of the conference. Many more things have to happen. The conference is the staging ground 
where the soil is being tilled and the seeds are being planted. These seeds will be cultivated and will eventually grow into plants, grow into trees, and will begin to bear fruit uh, of more RippleNet customers, more RippleNet customers, more financial institutions ready to turn on X Rapid, more utility, more financial institutions there to lobby governments around the world to push for decisions on regulations if they haven't already come to them. And once again, uh, for ending the argument as to whether or not XRP is a security, which it isn't, um, this needs to happen. Um, and with more customers, more lobbying power, it will happen. It's about time to set it free. That's it for my video today. If you enjoyed today's topic, please give a thumbs up. If you disagreed with anything I said, you agreed with anything that I said, if I missed out on anything, leave some comments below. Let's get some discourse going. Um, subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you get a Ledger Nano S. Um, I've put something in the description, a link in the description. All the YouTubers are, are, are promoting the Ledger Nano S. I think everyone realizes and understands how important it is. Ledger Nano S is getting a nice bump uh, from, from everybody talking about it. Um, but it is, at this moment in time, the most secure way uh, to manage and secure your own crypto uh, currency and it's really securing your own destiny on that. So with that, I'm going to wrap up today's video with a quick disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not giving you any kind of financial advice. I didn't tell you to buy or sell anything on this. <laughs> but um, if I am going to give you any advice, uh, then let it be this. Do your own research. You can do that. You can pull up these websites. You can look. Uh, decide if you want to buy or you don't want to buy. Invest only what you can afford to lose. And again, don't buy or sell based on the FOMO or FUD that's spread online. With that, I look forward to seeing you on my next video. And in the meantime, keep on hodling your crypto.